it's your boy Kevin, aka Canbo, and today is going to be a good day because we have car parts to install. Actually, lots of them, but let's get to it right now. We are going to back my car. Yep, with some airlift system. The backstory: um, my car has been on, on RSR's downspring and um, for about a year or so but my car is kind of old it's a 14 so my shock uh my shocks are like kind of blown and i needed something to replace it so i was going to get some core overs but a lot of people don't know is i felt like out of the love of my car so i want to do something like different and if i knew i was going to get core overs it's going to be the same thing I won't really feel nothing difference besides like me knowing that i have a new part so i decided to go back instead now in the beginning I was against bags, man. There's, I had too many problems, too many issues, and own friends who have them. And I just, knowing my luck, it just wasn't gonna, I don't know, I didn't wanna deal with the issue. But my wife decided, she's like, nah, just go for bags, you know? Maybe you'll love the car again, you know? So I was like, F it, you know? Might as well. So that's why we're here right now. If anything, I can make some content out of it. So let's go. All right, so I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can through every part that I have. I'm gonna start off with the main stuff. Of course, 3P packaging, airlift. We have the manifold here. Brand new manifold. This is the uh, one fourth or quarter line. Controller. Brand new, unopened. And the other box is just some fittings, the uh, fuse, terminal, and we have the line cutter. We have this box right here, your manual. So 3P, 3H, they're the same, just different harness. Got my kit from Bag Riders, so they get their own little manual too for 3P. Have more fittings for the tank, etc. I've seen it all. I actually bought a new leader lines and the new fitting. I'm gonna show y'all on my front to replace. Second compressor harness. Just add on. Then same thing. Dual compressor. I'll just open one for now. Black 444C. Comes with Two of these packages, the um, cover in the back, some fittings here and there. The other stuff for 3 feet. Quarter, a one and fourth line. The main harness. Wow, water trap. Valves. Fittings. So I got the uh, front struts, the rear strut, and the rear bags. Like I said before, I got it used from a fellow 3IS owner. It's actually in pretty good condition. The only issue that he actually did tell me was on the other one. It had like a scraping on the leader lines, which still looked fine, but I end up just buying a new one anyway to replace. This is for a 13, it's on the label, it says 13 to 17 IS rear wheel drive, 300. Any IS from 250, 350, 300 from uh, 14 to 17. But the main thing is rear wheel drive only, rear wheel drive only. Main focus is these two wires. I wanna route them in the car from rear to front as good as possible. So this right here is the main harness. You have the plug for the manifold. You have the relay for the compressor. The four wires are mainly for the 3H system. It's a separate plug that you need to go for this. This wire right here is connected to the compressor. You have the long extended USB, pink power ignition wire, and you have your, your normal black and red wire for the battery. This is the second harness compressor. Same concept, relay box, plug, red and black. At the very end, same thing, just for the battery only. Should be a simple wiring job. These kits are mainly plug and play. If you're scared to do anything, there's a bunch of videos out there. People run their wires and for their car. You can find one for your car or any car, but essentially it's the same concept. So here's my plan. 
for my trunk setup. What I wanted to do initially is mount the tank up here. That's why I got the seamless tank. I wanted to keep my trunk space because I do use it sometime and I would like to have the option to use it on a clean setup. So initial, uh, so hopefully I can mount all that stuff up here. Most of our components gonna be back here. We're gonna route the wire through the under tray. Hopefully through here, all the way there, under there, under there, under there. And then most of you might know if you have a 3IS or most cars, there's a grommet or a hole under there for wiring. But there's a rubber part right here that you can stick the wire code through. Like any car part install, the whole meme is when the job's supposed to take 30 minutes and then you end up being there for eight hours. So let's go. We're gonna take all the the trunk interior pieces off, like this off, unbolt this to get to over here, pull that back on both sides. But it's pretty simple. It's all just clips, 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 caps, clips, clips, clips. So yeah, taking most of the pieces off. See the hole back there. You have a lot, plenty of space. There's the, there's a hole right over there where I'm pointing the light at that I ran my wire through. So that's what I'm gonna do. Put it through there. It's gonna come out under here. These interior pieces just clips. You just pop them off. Super easy. I'm gonna run it through here, all the way to there. All the way through here, under there, so I can come out right where the battery is. All right, guys, I'm back with an update. I have routed the harness. I have a main harness here. One side is for the compressor over there, and then this side is the controller and the ignition wire. Then I have my second compressor wiring here, also running that way. Let me show y'all what it looks like. So, wires down there. I ran it up behind the box, my uh, Starlight box. It's hard to get into, but there's a little hole grommet thing or for wiring back there. I slip those wires behind there. It comes out of here. Now it's not neat, but I'm gonna have it run, run under this, the side, pushing, pushing. All the way up to, in that little rubber grommet. I don't know if you can see. This is my two compressor slash power maintenance. And I took out my battery because I needed space to just grab in there and to get there's a whole same thing. This is my my USB and then the ignition wire all the way under out of here. I am probably going to run my USB all across to there to where my CarPlay stuff is. Hangs out like that. I think it would be cool. And ignition. I already have a tap from a previous underglow. I'm gonna use that to tap into one of those fuse. And that should be fine. I'm planning on running the airlines kind of the same way as the uh, wiring in the same location because there's a lot of space between there. And that way, if there's a leak and stuff like that, I can just pop the plastic, I can look at it. And also not, also protect it from uh, being cut or scraped or something like that under the car. First part, it's not much because it's so hot. It's literally like 90, 100 degrees in here. Let me guys show you. It is 103 in here. So I'm dying, I had to take so many breaks just to run the wire because it, it was just, I couldn't, whatever. But I had to buy a new uh, leader lines to replace. Here's what I mentioned. Now, it didn't go all the way through. It did go through the wire, but just to be safe, for me not to have to go back and fix it, I bought new ones anyway. It was like 20, 20 30 bucks. We're going 
install the big parts is the struts. And I think I'm gonna start with the front because the fronts are easier. All I have to do is remove this cover for the AVS if you have a Mark Levinson F Sport. It's covered with three bolts. Once you do that, that bolt, undo the pin. You have one bolt right here. And I take off the um, bracket for the brake line. So the fronts are a lot easier. You can get it done pretty quick. The rear is the one that's kind of tough because you have end links. Not only you have the uh, top hat for the strut, you have to take off three or four more bolts at the bottom. If you watch my spring install, you'll know till that spring right there. So it'll take longer. So I wanted to do the front. To help leverage to get that bolt out, you need to put a jack and jack up under the control arm so it don't have any much stress. And that way you can hammer on the side and it will it should pop out. But remember, not under the rotors, behind it, under the control arms. Once that pop out, the thing is gonna swing. So to help not damage anything or hurt yourself, put the 17 nut back in where you took out and it's placed. So once it pop, it will just stand there Slowly lower the jack. This is loose. The only thing that's holding it, your brake line. Find something that you can tie. Bottom. 17 on this side, 19 on this side. Easiest way is impact this side out and then come out. So my car is the 350 F Sport with the AVS system, the adaptive variable suspension. If you have suspension, you can still use it, but from coilovers and up, you're gonna have to plug it and take it off because you can't use it anymore. I think the only Coilovers that I know that still you, you can still use the system is RSR and there I think they're like 2k about 2k new so We're gonna take these three bolts 14 mil and then there's another three 14 mil on the bottom of that The system you can unplug it if you want now I'm gonna change it out anyway, so you can turn it to the left Pull it all up out be careful with your lines now it's time to put in the front bag the thing of your car like me front strut bags install well, not fully. I just have one bolt up to hold it up. Okay. Tighten all the bolts to spec. I will have the diagram or the chart on the screen, but everything has been specced out. I'm running my airlines into this rubber grommet where it's used for the brake line right here. And I pushed it all the way up, use a flat head to give me some space comes from the bottom here out up here what I'm gonna do is this way it's easier for me to poke because I couldn't really see where the hole in there over there so that way I can just push all the way up and then into the thing into this grommet sorry into this grommet back here all the way down and run it back there's a, uh, an extra spot up here the very top what I'm pointing at um, I just cut a slit through there and poke it in. It's feet on the bottom. I have a lot of left. Got it wired up. I tucked it under here. Under here. All the two harness and the lines. I left this one open so you can see. This is from Starlight. The wine here. I got the 
uh, airline down here, all through here, comes all the way back. And I got plenty left. Right now we're gonna do our tank setup in the back. This is temporary until I figure out what I wanna do for the top mount. So for now, I'm gonna use this board. I'm gonna wrap it in this uh, kind of like fabric material. It's kind of like the trunk. Uh, I got this from Hobby Lobby. It was half off, 40% off, $3 for like. Essentially, this is it. I have my seamless tank back here, my dual compressor in the middle. I have my manifold up front. Gonna reverse the plate. I have enough space for the harness and enough space for the lines from the bottom. Mounted up well, besides the tank here, go into the end like this. So, I went ahead and did the wiring already. I cramped at the terminal heads. So, one set is the uh, main harness for like the computer and then the manifold and stuff like that, and the other one is the second compressor harness. Um, black, of course, just do terminal, and then you have this like fuse tapper, it comes like together, and then you got to cut it in half, and then one end to the red and then the other one to a terminal you have a this box water seal box that house a 30 fuse on both of them heat shrink cramp so ignition wire is cramped i have this fuse tap thing from the last project i did with the star uh, not starlight the underglow so that's why I have it, but if you don't have you want to buy one, I have the link down below from Amazon. Normal cramp. I tapping it into the same thing I had the underglow is the 10 amp ignition ECU number two. Right here. Ignition CU number two. I've already taken out the fuse and put it on here. A USB I route the wire from here and under here go right here I'm gonna have the other part of the USB hidden in this compartment and then run it all the way to the top to up here the center console or this area where my apexy throttle control is for right now fog seem like it's the easiest place to put it at Went ahead, right now I cramp these kind of plug terminal, disconnect, they call it disconnector or disconnect for the harness for the compressor. So that way, um, if something happened with the compressor, say it breaks down or anything like that, I need to replace it or switch it, I can just unplug it and then do the other one and then plug it back in. Instead of having to cut the wire using the um, butt ends, butt connectors. My air tank right here, it's six inch, three gallon tank, seamless tank. We're gonna do all the fittings for it right now. It comes with two holes, two uh, three eighths on each side, so four, and then you have one one fourth at the bottom. Top, we have a bunch of fittings they give us from Airlift. Some elbows, some purge. So this right here is 3 8 Most of it is a 3 8 thread. So this right here is a 3 8, 3 8 to 1 4 male and female. I'm gonna use two on the top part because this is gonna be for the compressor. I have a 3 8 plug back here because that this hole is what I'm not gonna use for. And then for this side, we're gonna put the water trap coming out. And in the bottom, of course, this is where the drain line is, but the bottom is one fourth, so I can use one of the elbows and then add the line, um, air hose, uh, air line to it. I got the CMC one fourth water trap. For some reason, I have all these fittings, but I'm missing one crucial part. The water trap have 
has uh, two female ends and I can't screw it to the end so I needed uh, male to male connectors I don't know if they didn't ship it to me or I lost it here in this garage somewhere so I had to go give me a set from Harbor Freight this is a three pack it was like 650 um, I needed this middle one right here of course before tying everything screwing everything we're gonna have to wrap thread sealing on the fittings trap here make sure that the arrows the directional towards the manifold so this is pointing out that way going towards the manifold done fittings done hopefully there's no leak fingers crossed if it does gotta unscrew it re-thread it no big deal plug top top water trap angle angle I think I've got my wiring where I wanted a place for now so all my lines right here I have the both harness on the left side I have one of them tapped into there and then the other one into there grounded all the wires went out there these one of the I think that one is the second compressor harness right here but I have the plug there the router back there um it's kind of thick but hopefully once I clean it up it'll be fine since this this black part up here this black piece up here kind of moves up and down and there's a good amount of gap so I might just let it loose so the front are fine so the rear I'm gonna do it this way first and see how it goes I have this two rubber grommet back here under the spare tire for the left I mean the left rear and the right rear and I'm gonna run it under I don't know if you can see there's this under tray back down here under tray you unbolt a few bolts loosen up and you route it across This slide right here. I have it there. Um, not the ideal place. So these are the parts that I've been missing that's been stopping me from finishing the project. Um, we have the lower bracket and then the bag itself. But long story short, the guy that I bought it from, whoever uninstalled his back stuff didn't give the, him back this upper bracket and then the other plate. And all this stuff so but shout out to him though he covered covered the expense to buy the replacement part he didn't know neither so it's all good but I just had to wait like about a, like five days basically so what you needed I needed this spacer upper spacer mount for the top you have the top up here and then you this thing goes on top like that and then I have the necessary bolt for it but that's really what has been stopping me from finishing the car. But everything has been wired up. Lines are there. I'm going to test where the line is going to go. I already did the other side already. Um, I did the side already. Check for clearance. Both sides are good. Of course, I haven't torqued everything the bolt back to spec yet, but bag looks pretty good all right amateur me didn't know that my battery on my camera died so I kind of skip all through the whole install but I'm gonna try to do a quick summary for y'all so what it is you put the spacer uh, the upper spacer up top right here slide it in and then you put the bracket this top bracket first there's one black bolt that's uh, you screwed it to the top and then you have two uh, smaller bolt coming down bolt the two bolts to this bag once you finally get it seated with the with the roll up under also you the bag should sit in this little the ribbit hard to explain but all, everything is in the diagram the only thing I would say you unbolt this bolt this right here and then this bolt now 
It doesn't say in the manual, but my advice is to also unbolt this bolt because this bracket here, when it comes down, it'll hit it. So it'll be a lot easier for you. In reverse, I did it on both sides already. How I did my rear lines. I mentioned that I routed through here from the top. I have it zip tied to this and I'll do this space right here. I went through this space and it comes out here and under this top bracket into the bags. Um, the rear bags is actually kind of pain to hook up and look at maintenance, but I did the same thing on both sides. It's hard to show because it's so tight. I haven't uh, torqued on all the bolts yet because I want to make sure that everything is right before I tie up everything. Uh, so the only thing I have right now is plug the controller to the USB, connect the terminal to the battery, the controller will turn on, and then maybe the compressor will turn on to, to uh, put the air tank in the thing. And then when that happens, I'll make sure that if any of the line is leaking. So let's get that to that. Hey! 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 You hear that? Sound of success. Woo! PSI 36. Good morning. It's the next day. Uh, it was late last night, so I went and ahead and went to sleep. Today is the day that we finalize or finish. It's car. Now you saw the compressor and the controller turn on, so everything, that's the first step. Now we're gonna calibrate the system to recognize the manifold and all that stuff. Um, I think I'm supposed to put on the wheel and do all that stuff. I think I saw people like having their car calibrated, you know, up and down, whatever, on, on the floor, but since there's no air in the tire, I don't know. Just to be safe, I'm just gonna do the calibration first, see if I can get air in the tire, I mean, air in the bags and then put on the wheels and then drop the car so and then do the calibration so we'll see okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put air in the bags manually so i can mount the tires i mean the wheels and then put them on the ground all right i guess i'm gonna leave it like this then put on the wheels and we'll see how it goes car has been on the ground I think it says right now in the rear, I have 100 PSI on both rear and the front. I put it at uh, 80 something and it was still kind of too low for the thing, but you know, just to have enough to come down, I'm gonna start with the car. Back, got on a pretty somewhat level surf first su surface. Super dirty, it's been in the garage for a whole week. Time to do the calibration so everything, so I can double check everything and it will work. Yes, yes, two. Doing oh, something. Calibration is complete, <clears throat> ready to use. Of course you saw me didn't set up my height, I mean my max and min height, so. But everything is good, I'll go back. What's up fam, back again. It's been about a month since you last saw the cl last clip. I wanted to wait for a while until like, I've driven around, tested here and there, if there, see if there's any issue or anything like that, and then tell y'all about it. The only issue I have so far with this car is I had like two leaks from my air tank, but that's because I didn't tighten it enough. So all I did is really just tighten it more and it, the leak stopped. It was like from my tank and then my uh, water trap. Second, besides like the install yourself, uh, the cons wise, it just costs more money than coilovers, you know? So pros, of course, you're gonna adjust the ride height up and down whatever you want. But Houston Roads, I've had to use it multiple times and honestly, it's ease and relax. I'm not stressed out about any driveway or curves and like that or speed bumps. It's pretty cool. Um, of course, 
almost aired out. I mean, look at that. Uh, I still have fitment stuff to fig figure out, but I mean, it was not too bad. You know, not too bad. I can't go on the floor because if for all my Lexus owner right there, you know those those bumper tabs. You know, unless you do in camber, which um, I don't want to get to all that. It's a whole different story. My wife thinks it's dope. My friend thinks it's dope. Uh, I think it's dope. Um, airing out sounds really loud, but then I, I got kind of whatever, but I got over it. The car, you know, the color already turns head. So then having this, a lot of people turns head. Um, gas stations here and there. Check all the bags so far a few times. So front and the rear, no rubbing. Airline's fine. Everything's cool. No issue. So fingers crossed. Uh, my situation, I do have a daily-ish, but I still drive this car pretty often too, so kind of affect that. However, if you want to get bags in your car and you do daily all the time, I know some people that do it and they're probably fine. And I know other people that do it and a lot of stuff happens, let's just say that. So it's all on maintenance and all up to you, your tolerance of style and I guess <laughs> headache. So but overall, would I recommend having bags? Of course. You know, if you got the funds for it and you have the patience for it, coming down to the convenience of going up, adjusting height level of where you want to go is pretty cool. The style, of course, cool. Cost, con, I mean, would I do this on my other cars? Depends. I've said it already, if I had to do this car as a daily, I would probably take off the bag and sell it and get coilovers and then go from there. Just, I don't want to deal with the headaches. Okay, they didn't have anything at all, and I can't imagine, I, I did not imagine that I would have a car like this at this stage of my life. Like, for real though, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, if you know, you know. It's just something that you, just, when you were a kid, one thing to have a Lexus, but you know, to have it like work wheels and bags. And when I was a kid, you know, when I saw someone drive like something like this, I'd been like, oh man, that's so cool, you know, like. Now to be able to be on that that other side, you know, I I still think my car is okay. So there's a lot more stuff you can do, but the only way is up from here. So thank you for watching this video, and thank you to everybody that's been commenting and following and subscribing and everything like that. I met a couple subscribers in person, and it's still kind of weird to me when they're like, "Oh, bro, I watch your video and all that stuff. I'm a fan." I'm just like, "Whoa!" Like I thought I was just somebody just post a video and that's it on YouTube. If you haven't already check out Inspire, we have new shirts, we have a license plate frame, we have um, the jet tags, we have air freshener, we have new uh, Nomori flags. I hope you like this video, so please like and comment down below your opinion on bags. Whatever it is, what you want to bag your car or not bag your car, you don't care about it, you care about it, you would like want to do it, whatever it is, just comment down below and I'll for sure the reply back. So, so till next time, deuces.